everyone. My name is Padmini Nidubolu, and I'm the co-founder of Lean and Agile for Women, an organization built on the premise of supporting each other and raising the floor for each other and uh, growing stronger together so we can, we can all serve the community, serve ourselves, and learn from each other. And as part of this initiative, uh, we, have, we have launched a project called LEA 100, Lean and Agile 100. And this is an effort to introduce and tell the stories of 100 amazing, incredibly self-believing women from across the world. And these are 100 among many, and we hope to get an opportunity to introduce all of them to you someday. But for now, uh, within our list of 100, uh, we have with us Eglis Vera. Hi, Eglis, how are you? Hi, Tamini, how are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you for introducing me. Thank you for inviting me. This is really, uh, really honoring. This, this is, um, I think this is the um, most timely and valuable thing we can do in the pandemic times, you know, we are in. Let me introduce you very briefly to our audience, you know, your background, where you come from, and we want to dive a little bit deeper into your story, okay? okay. So for those of you who do not know Eglis, Eglis is the ultimate champion of mentorship and people development. She was instrumental in bringing My Swagger program to an incredibly diverse group of women at TD Bank. She has a vast experience in the financial industry, leading Agile teams in Latin America and Canada. She's currently leading the Agile transformation for TD Wealth and Insurance. She has been an active member of different committees supporting diversity and inclusion to increase inclusivity and provide support to minority groups such as women in technology and Hispanic communities. She volunteered for a number of initiatives, including planting trees in few countries, becoming member of the board of directors at nonprofit organizations, leading enterprise United Way campaigns, and being a recurrent participant on United Way, CN Tower Climb, and Ride for Heart. She's also a world traveler, and a professional scuba dive instructor. I mean, that is just amazing, I guess, right? <laughs> I think I love that more than anything else. Um, that's amazing. So let me ask you, let me begin with asking you, one of your strengths is culture transformation, right? Clearly from your background. Can you share your thoughts on why culture change is so foundational you know, in organizations? Well, culture is everything, right? It's everything we breathe. It's everything we do. Um, I, I find quite interesting when people have concerns that certain measure or, or certain kind of decisions won't roll out in an organization because of the culture. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we are the culture. So yeah. like, if you were telling me that, that's my answer. That means that you don't accept it or that you don't like it or you don't think it's a good idea, right? Because at the end, culture is not like this thing floating in the air. We are the culture. So uh, if we want to build organizations where we feel that we're accomplishing and that we're being our best and that we're accomplishing our goals and that we're really giving back to any gift we have, and it, it can be in any, in, in my area, it's more on the technology side, yeah. depending on the area, it could be in different areas. But we, mm -hmm. when we are in a new position, it's about giving back, really giving yes. back and, and making the place where you are a better place. So when you leave, it's better than when you join. Right. So we really have to build this kind of nurturing culture where everybody has the opportunity to grow and have the opportunity to be their best and give their best of themselves. Does it make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. No, but I mean, thank you, because uh, I think that context of culture transformation is so vital to any, any uh, transformation. Um, also, your own board of directors, right, of Hispano Tech, Women in Tech, uh, Women in Business, and, um, you know, and also we have Women in Agile, Women in Lean and Agile. Uh, Lean and Agile is, is about women in Lean and Agile spaces. Um, you know, why do we have so many women in, according to you? Why can't we just say we are folks in agile space? Um, I mean, I know the answer uh, according to my own, uh, you know, perceptions through my lens. 
but from your lens, why is there a need to create anything women in? I think the main reason is because there is no enough representation of women in. Um, there are not, there have been plenty of times with I'm the only woman in a room. Yes. And that shouldn't be the case. Um, I have been in other spaces where we are two women and I can see when the other women tries to talk, somebody else is going to talk on top of her. That's not right. So we have to support each other. We have to create this kind of sisterhood, you know, like yeah. we, we have to hold each other back and we have to, going again to the culture aspect, be in cultures that sustain that diversity because diversity is not about numbers. I, I want to have 50% women. It's not about that. It's about having the opportunity to grow as anybody else. And, and in my case, my focus is women because it's the, the cause that is closer to my heart. But for sure, they will be, I, I know there are other organizations that are more focused on, on black communities or Aboriginal communities. And the, at the end of the day, these are all diversity groups that have not been well represented and they have actually tried to make their way in whatever or, uh, line of business or, or um, yeah, or, or uh, industry, right? So that's why in my case, it's women in technology, two, two close items to my heart, women in agile, very close to my heart. And I will always be there to support women to grow and to build a bigger community that, actually really have a stronger voice from our side as well yeah yeah and and there's so much talk about inclusion right at least right you know there's so much talk about inclusion but i i rarely see a well-represented decision making table i rarely see a well-represented leadership tables and i'm talking about you know all kinds of inclusion not just women but women from different yeah. cultures Right. In fact, I, I've been kind of advocating for that quite a bit, especially in, in the pandemic that we are in, because women from different cultures have different challenges. They Absolutely. come with different backgrounds. So it's not just having one woman in, in the group, but, you know, be cognizant of different cultures because we, this is a global space that we are operating in. So what does inclusion mean to you? And, and uh, how did you see that, uh, you know, function in, in your ecosystem? To your point, it's diversity has many, many angles. Uh, we can have diversity of sexual orientation, race, um, experiences. You want to have sometimes diversity in terms of people that have been exposed to different markets, places, or have been in contact with different geographies. So all that brings diversity. And, and the inclusion is to have enough people on the leadership layers that can resonate with you and with your point of view. So it's easier for each one of us to yes. find that funnel that will actually understand what we mean and will actually also help you to echo your voice and to bring your perspective to the table. It's, it's well proven that organizations that have diversity in their C-suite and in their le senior leadership, they do way better than any other because they can actually listen better to their customers because they are not just focusing in a narrow view of a certain type of clients. They can really see everything because they have enough people in their leadership teams that have that sensibility to that yeah. specific area, right? So, yeah. so really that's what inclusion means to have enough, to be strong enough to get everybody's voices listened and to have enough ears that you want to listen to you. Yes, yes. Now, um, you know, this could be a hypothetical question, right? So if we as women in an organization see that the inclusivity is not at an optimal level, we know that it's not an inclusive scenario, what do you think we can do actively without hurting ourselves, right? Because we don't want to be the scapegoats of a political um, you know, struggle, but what can we do in an organization to, to bring awareness to that and, and improve it? I, I think the most important thing to do is to create alliances. 
And alliances don't have to be just between women. It's not about just women supporting women. It's also finding good allies, you know? And, and there, there are always, always good people there that actually connect with this cause. And I think this is something that is becoming more and more open. It's, a, it's, a, it's Now it's a context that we, we can actually talk about these things more openly. Yeah. So it's really about finding those allies can be uh, especially if you have male allies like that's very useful because that actually will advocate for you and for for all your other women in the organization so try to organize yourself obviously support each other as women like uh, to my point before you have to build a, like a sisterhood like we have to be there for each other yeah. and really start looking for all those allies in the different levels of the organization that will help you get your voice listened you really have to have a clear plan on that. Like, just don't let it go. Just don't let it happen. Like, have a goal. Make sure what, what is what is success going to be look for you. Like, oh well, we we may not get fifty fifty on every single uh, area, but maybe just to see that instead of having one woman or no woman at all, that you have at least three. So start yeah. with small goal. Find good allies that can help you and will support you. And, and make sure that your voice gets heard. Like, join uh, volunteering organizations. For, uh, be active on LinkedIn or any platform that you actually find useful for your goals. And, and make sure that you keep passing the message to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. No, that's very powerful. Thank you. I think, you know, starting small is so important because when we look at a goal which is so huge, we get intimidated. I know. But you know, yeah. piecemeal it, decompose it, just like you decompose a product vision. Exactly. One step at a time. And I think you bring up a great point about allyship, right? You know, find allies. And I've always said this, that we are not doing anything behind the doors, right? The, the male allies are all around us. There are partners, hiring managers, there are colleagues. So find them, and, and there are quite a few. In fact, I've had... Uh, tremendous sponsors in men. So, uh, you know, it's been a great ride in that way. Yeah. yeah. No, that's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the Swagger program? You know, that stands out. Yeah, that well, that was actually in my previous role because right now I'm not at TV anymore. I'm working for another organization. Um, yes. That was in my previous role because there we had uh, a community that was called Women in Technology and I was representing wealth and insurance. So I became a very good friend of a great woman. She's called, uh, she's called Leslie. And she has this program that uh, was for leadership in general. So she will bring the, is a very structured well training to um, incentivate new ways of thinking, how to solve problems and, you know, upgrade uh, your leadership skills. So we did that. I was part of that program. It was great. And, um, after that, I talked to her, like, I would like to use this, Mary, a more condensed version of this, because that was a program of almost six months, like really something short and sweet that just focuses on leadership, especially in women, because one of the issues that we are supposed to have is that we didn't have enough pipeline of women for future promotions. Mm. So I wanted to tackle that issue from the really from the root cause, right? Okay, so if that's the case, let's just work in the women that are very junior and make sure that they change the perspective of how they communicate, how they position their ideas, how like how they empower themselves. Because you cannot empowerment is it doesn't come from outside. Like I can tell anybody you are empowered, that means nothing until exactly. you don't really know that you are empowered. So it's something right. that has to come from yourself. So that was really the goal of the program. So this was just six, six lessons and they ended up presenting in, in front of a CIO. So they will come with in, innovative ideas, solving problems that were related to the organization. And they will come with very innovative ideas and ways of presenting that. And I could see the change in those women. It was amazing. Many, like 50% of them got promotions in, in within a year. Um, they were starting, they started to go and be in volunteers in different events. And they will tell me like, I, before I will have never 
raise my hand to go and talk to anybody and look at me now and I was so <laughs> proud of that. I know. I was yeah. so, beautiful. so gratifying, yeah. right? You know, it it's just, very, very gratifying. gratifying. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's I'm very amazing. proud of them. Yeah, and and I think you know this can be done pretty much in any organization, right? Absolutely. A leader like you, uh, uh, you know, any of us can take this initiative and form those groups. And it, again, it is a very self-sustaining group, self-supporting exactly. group. Exactly. And I think the outcome will be very gratifying. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, we should gather more tools and, um, you know, uh, nuggets from you possibly that we can share. Uh, on Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, anytime. Yeah, so we will definitely make that happen. So finally, what is your message to our community at this? And it could be just, you know, a, a word or just something that you live by. What would you pass on as a message to our community of women? Uh, I will tell you all. First, be nice with yourself. Be kind to yourself. Yeah. Talk to you like you will talk to your children, to your best friend, to somebody you love don't be hard on you and, and i know we have a, we we have gone a, a long way yeah so far we have made great progress and we still have a long way to go yes so be patient just don't give up keep you know keep fighting for what you know is right yeah and every mind that you get to change every person that you get to do you know light up that awareness of how we can actually build a more equal a more diverse a more inclusive environment that is a big win so be nice don't get desperate i know it's a big 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 goal <laughs> that we have in front of us yes but still it, we are gonna get there little by little you know like don't stop this is this is this is not a mark this is a this is not a sprint this is a marathon right so you yeah. have to keep going yeah. So really, that all starts by loving yourself and, and accepting and, and being nice with yourself. Wow, that is pretty powerful. Thank you. And I think most, most of us forget to love ourselves because we put ourselves to the last as women because we want to Always. make everybody else happy. Family or, or organizations and everything. But exactly. Still, if you don't uh, put the oxygen mask to yourself, you're exactly to anybody else. Thank That's you right. so much, Eglis. That was such a powerful wrap of this conversation. And um, thank you so much for coming on to Leah 100. I think your story will be uh, instrumental in so many else's stories. So thank you. Oh, so thank you.